Good morning, folks. Good morning, folks. How are you? Welcome to Tech TV. Um, we're out together today. Um, <laughs> and we're at uh, Red House Holsteins. So we're here for a routine trim session. Uh, there's between 60 and 70 cows to trim today. And uh, I don't think there's probably really any lame ones, I don't think. So it should be nice and speedy. Um, we're gonna get set up now and we'll maybe bring you for a wee walk around later on at a few interesting things. Uh, if we have time. Oh, we'll have time, Yarrow. We'll make time. We'll make time. Good morning, folks, and welcome to Tech TV. I don't know what you would call us, but I think we're good down over the name of Hoof Trimmers. taking the crush off the van there I'm just going to show you where we're setting up today um, we sat up here at the end of this race here um, so this here can hold three or four cows and then uh, Brian and Jason have got this little pen here uh, for us which holds about eight or ten cows so we bring them across from the parlor in here and then they come down here in through the race and out there. The fact that we can bring eight or ten cows over at a time means that they're never too far away from silage or lying down and they're only over here for maybe 10 or 15 minutes before they're back to silage and a cubicle or a drink or whatever they need. Tom's hardly fit to keep up with his mover this morning. So, we'll have this, this foot here, and you've put a block on it. Put a block on it here, wedge block, quite a large foot, big toe, and a bit of bruising here. We could have maybe got away without a block, but this will let the bruising, let the sick claw rest. And uh, the next time we see her, there'll be no bruising and most likely no block. Supervisor around here. Come on, Jerry. I'm afraid to say, Tom, I think you look like more of a nurse than a supervisor with your visor. A nurse, would you say? A lot of you might not know this about me, but I'm actually a graffiti artist in my spare time. Only joking. We just need to spray the cows so that when they go back in with the rest of the herd we know the ones that have been trimmed. The ones that are due to be trimmed have a blue mark on them so then we put this on them so we know they've been trimmed today. I'd already st actually started this trim whenever I noticed the car end was actually pushed out like a balloon. So this cow wasn't lame at all but there's a fair chance we'd probably put a block on this just in case she did happen to go lame on it. And that's the great thing about preventative trimming. Um, this cow wasn't showing any signs of lameness. She probably would have maybe in in a couple of weeks, but we do uh, all the cows here are drying off in a hundred days milking. So uh, we really did get this girl in time. That does look quite sore, but she was walking 100% fine on it. And uh, this here is a preventative trim and a preventative block just to rise her up with this area and uh, keep her happy and keep her profitable. So as I was saying when we were setting up, this herd is trimmed twice a year, um, so there's really no lameness at all, it's all prevention. Uh, this here is a prime example, this cow has got a little bit of bruising here. So, this is a prime example here, this cow has got a little bit of bruising in the outer claw at the back, which you would expect, and uh, we've got her in time. This here is trimmed out nicely, her foot's nice and balanced, 
and uh, the only thing we need to do now is remove the pressure around the pedal bone to give it a little bit of suspension room uh, to prevent the sole ulcer. So these cars are really well cared for. The reason there's very little lameness is because they're well cared for and trimmed twice a year and uh, there's great attention to detail with the rubber in the parlour and different things like that. So. This here is a little bit of hoof that came from around the pedal bone. So as you can see, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of uh, redness here, bruising. The carium has actually bled through the sole, and uh, it's the start of a sole ulcer. But we've trimmed this in time, and we've relieved the pressure, and it'll trim it'll trim out nicely. That's that foot nicely trimmed and balanced. So that cow will hopefully be free from lameness for the next six months uh, and that will keep her happy, comfortable and profitable. So I've left home trimming and I'm just going to look for David here and get a wee bit of a farm walkabout and show you a few things that might be of interest. So David, talk me through how you start off your heifer calves here. Uh, well, the heifer calves are, well, we will lift the calf away from the cow and milk, milk the cow immediately and, and feed the calf its own mother's colostrum. And they'll get it for a few days and then they'll come down here and we'll teach them on, on the feeder in this, in this week's station here. And they'll learn to drink themselves. Now, this, this is our oldest batch of calves here currently. This is actually a wee ET calf from the Rude, Rude Zip family, a Zazel, a Pole Zazel. So, but they're all ad lib milk, so they can drink as much as they want, or as little as they want, um, and they do drink quite a lot. So there's a little automatic feeder here that the calves can go in ad lib there and uh, get as much food as they want. So it, it mixes it up over here, David, does it? Ah, uh, yes, it mixes it there. So um, just puts the water into the bowl and the powder, and, and the actual feed program is all programmed in, and it feeds the calves. And I say they're all fed ad lib, um, as much milk or as little milk as they want. Um, and then all their dates of births are in, so it'll wean them off and do, do everything basically automatically. Ad lib nuts and ad lib straw, you can see all the bales sitting up there. Sometimes we'll have a hay rack whenever we run out of bales that are sitting there for bedding, but currently they're just eating out of those bales. So. And they're doing pretty well. On average, I would say they're, they're roughly doing about, um, by the time they're weaned at, at two months old, they'd be about two and a half times their birth weight. So they're, they're going quite well. Yeah. Well, they're certainly very happy looking there. Very happy looking. It's a real little calf hotel. Well, I certainly wouldn't mind being a calf in there. It, uh, well, I suppose it's, it's, uh, it's good to look after your young heifers because they are going to be tomorrow's cows. Yep. So. Got this ready to start. Everything else sort of follows on. So there's a little calf in getting a little ad lib feed and I'm just thinking there, I wonder could we get a machine like that with coffee in it. So David, what sort of a system do you run here? We run a high input, high output system, um, basically autumn calving. I bait calve like 90% of our cows and heifers from September till Christmas time. And about maybe 20 all together in January and February, a few stragglers. And we try to push them as hard as we can. 
feed them a lot of meal um, and try and take as much as much milk out of the, as much milk out of each cubicle space as possible. We try and be as efficient as we can. Um, I think by taking as much milk per cubicle, it's well apart from being the most profitable way to run. We feel um, the figures that we can do you can show it's our best profitable way to run. It's also the most carbon friendly way to run. You know. We're taking roughly 13 and a half thousand liters out of um, 107 or out of each cubicle, 170 cubicles. If we were only taking 7,000 liters out, we'd need twice as many cubicles. But all that concrete, all the roofs, all the tank, and everything would have to be doubled for the same amount of milk. So yeah, I think it's an environmentally friendly way to run, and the cows are cows are generally very happy, comfortable, yeah. and yeah, no, they're very they're very happy indeed. It, uh, well, you have these with this light system in here. If you can see it, it comes on and off itself, does it? It does. It is controlled by, um, well, it's on timers to start with. So, what we're trying to achieve is over 200 lux from half five in the morning till half 11 at night, um, which is basically 18 hours a day. And the reason for that is that when cows want to be going back and calf is roughly the 21st of June, which is the longest day of the year. Um, the reason why they want to be doing that is because they want to be calving in in the spring for the spring flush of grass in nature. So we're trying to simulate the 21st of June all year round because that's when they're at peak milk and also at peak fertility in nature. So mm -hmm. um, they work, work pretty well. Yeah. So we're just going to take a walk down here to the maternity ward. There's a few cows waiting to calve in there. So David, all these calving pens is nice and clean. Um, what's your regime with those? A uh, regime, regime with these, um, well there's been about 70 cows calved through these pens over this past, I suppose, three weeks. Um, they're still not too bad, but they will need another power hose out um, at some stage. So what we'll do is we'll power hose them all out, spray them all down in formaldehyde to kill any potential bugs that could infect the calf at calving, um, and then whitewash them all. Because that does two things, it puts a physical barrier between any bits of dirt or disease that's actually left in the concrete walls. And it's obviously very alkaline, so it, it kills a lot of stuff and it's nice and bright. Mm -hmm. and just brightens everything up and it's easy to see and it's pleasant to look at. Yeah, no, it looks nice and fresh. Thanks for that little walk around, David. Good boy. And uh, I better get back to Tom and I better let you go and get your dinner. Hi. Thank you. Take care. There's Brian there, he's our taxi man today. Chauffeur. Are you busy today, Brian? Always. It, uh, we have finished. We have finished trimming all of the milk cows, so the dry cows are out in the field. So Brian's taxiing them in to get their trim, and then taxiing them back home whenever they've had their trim. I'm just coming back from that wee walk around the farm with David. Uh, it was good to see those few things. And uh, I could just spotted Tom here and I think he's heating up his lunch. What's that, Tom? That's a sausage roll that Marcus gave me last night. And I don't like my sausage roll cold. Now it's getting warm. So while Tom's heating up a sausage roll, I'll go and get my cold sandwich since Marcus didn't send a sausage roll for me. Dave, you've been routine trimming for a right wee while now, and uh, how would you rate it, or what do you think of it? Hey, well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't not routine trim, put it like that. We do them at, at drying off and at 100 days. Um, and in between any 100 days of milk and in between any of the emergency ones, I'll generally hack a bit at them and try and get them sorted out until you get back again. But um, I think if you don't routine trim, you just, you're just you just waiting for problems to happen. But if you can get them trimmed out before, before those problems come along, you'll have a, a lot happier, healthier cow. And yep. as a byproduct of that, hopefully she'll give you more milk. Yeah. You have uh, recently, obviously, you know your genetics very well. Um, 
and you're providing the service now where you can advise farmers on what bulls or whatever, that type of thing. So that's Yes, basically I suppose it can be as, as detailed or or as not detailed as the farmer wants. It can be down to picking a list of bulls or down to deciding what bulls to use and what particular females in the herds. Um, and that's um, if you want to find out a bit more about that is redhousegeneticsolutions.com that's 100 we'll put the wee link in there into the video there hopefully so no worries you can check that out then you can find find the farm on the farm page on facebook at red house hostings or instagram or twitter or anything things is red house hostings so. this cow that we've got on the crush here 1459 jesus she's a special cow i'm not sure what he had she is she is given 120 tons of milk in her life that's what she's produced um, so just to put that into perspective that's 120 thousand litre tanks so it looks something like this that really is a lot of cappuccinos lattes milkshakes or whatever it is you're into That's us finished up at Red House Holsteins for the day. That was a good fun day's trimming and uh, we got everything done. Uh, nice preventative trims. And, uh, Which we've now got the Friday feeling. That's the right. Feed up Friday. I forgot today was Friday. The so. uh, KVK event taking place, the KVK conference in Denmark. We would have loved to have been at it and intended to be at it, but due to the pressure of work, we can't go. And we're not at the KVK conference, but we're working the KVK. And I suppose that's just as meaningful. I don't want to get all emotional. It, uh, yeah, it was a good, we were there two or three years ago. It was a good, it was a good conference, but- Terrific event. We'll hopefully be there at the next one. Um, thanks again for watching, folks. And uh, if you liked the video, give it a, give it a thumbs up or, if you have any comments put them below and uh, we appreciate all you subscribers and uh, if you haven't already you might click it tonight thanks folks take care and we'll see you all soon thanks for watching